All right, so let's take a look at our options for resizing and saving our images. Let's talk about resizing first. Let's go to the image menu and then let's go to image size. And here we have our options for resizing. We have the width, the height, um, and the way that we can change those values. Right now it's set to pixels, which is gonna be by default. And for photography, we can change them or what we're mostly gonna use is besides pixels are percent, inches, or if you are another part of the world, we can use centimeters or millimeters. Uh, points, picats, and columns, those are not really very useful for photography. Okay, so let's say we want to reduce our image by a percentage. So we select percent, and this is gonna be 100% is what by default. Let's say we don't really care about the final pixel output, we just know that we wanna reduce it to about 25%. So we press 25, and it's gonna resize the image. And in here we have a little bit of a preview. Um, by default, th these two um, numbers, the width and the height, should be locked to one another so that the image, re so that the image remains on the same aspect ratio. So, and if it's not, we just click on this icon. This means that they lock. So whenever I change one, the other one is going to change, respectively. Right. So now the image is to so is going to be resized to twenty five percent, and the final dimension is twelve hundred ninety six pixels by eight hundred sixty four pixels. Well, let's say we want to have a specific uh, length of width in pixels, in which way, instead of using percentage, we use actual pixels. So let's say I like resizing my images to web by 1200 pixels on the longer side. So now we have 1200 pixels by 800 pixels. And the 800 changed by itself, respectively, to the aspect ratio of the photography. Now, um, and then we can change the resolution for for web it's really not gonna matter but let's set it to 72 this is one uh, really checkbox that you have to to check because it matters the resampling by default it's gonna be set to automatic one of the issues that it, we're gonna have with automatic is that when we're downsizing the image it's gonna sharpen it and sometimes it might sharpen it too much than what we want so let's try it let's keep it on automatic as it was and let's click OK. So now it resizes our photograph. Let's bring it to 100% by pressing Command 1 on a Mac or Control 1 on Windows. And you see, this movie is going to be compressed. Um, so I don't know how you're going to see it, but to me, it looks a little bit too sharp. Uh, the Photoshop algorithm sharpened the image too much for me. So let's undo this image sizing. Let's go back to Image, Image Size. Let's bring it down again to 1200 pixels. And instead of the automatic, let's use bilinear. Okay, this one is not as sharp. And if I ever want to sharpen it, now I have control of how much I want it to be sharpened. One thing to also think you notice is that this command is usually not going to remember it, or sometimes it doesn't remember it. So, to make sure that we don't accidentally select one that will over sharpen our images, let's actually change it permanently. Let's go to the preference. And um, for that, we're gonna go to Photoshop preferences. And if you're on a window, you're gonna have to the, to, to the file edit menu. And then it's gonna be down below somewhere around here. So let's go Photoshop preferences, general. All right, now in here, where it says image interpolation, we're gonna change it from by cubic automatic to by linear. And press OK. So that was the common image resizing interface. But most likely, if you're resizing images, you're resizing them for the web. So let's learn how to do that. Before that, let's go back to the original image size. Okay, let's just go a little bit. Okay, so let's go to File, Save for Web, and that will bring us an interface that gives us a little bit more options. In here, you can convert your image to sRGB if you use another color space, and you can embed that color space to the image. You can also just compression and the same image size and to add the percentage of the pixels just like we had on the other menu. I honestly don't use this menu a lot because if you're working on images that are way too big, like large composites, this menu will be so slow to use and to preview. So I use the other one and then I just save my image. And remember to check on the quality drop-down menu, which is the same as the resampling drop-down menu that was on the other dialog.